Hi everybody, welcome to Ask Dr. Aviva. I'm Dr. Aviva Ram. This week's blog is about sore throats and how to know whether you need a strep test or antibiotics or whether you can just kind of treat a common sore throat at home. Interestingly, an article just came out in the Journal of the American Medical Association last week stating that doctors are writing six times as many prescriptions as they should for sore throats. And with kids, as many as 70% of all kids who go to the doctor's office for a sore throat leave with an antibiotic prescription. Yet only about 30% of those kids have strep throat and half of all of those kids are just normal healthy strep carriers you know we all have strep living in our throats that actually have just a cold or a viral infection of another sort in fact only 10 percent of all sore throats are actually strep throats yet it's one of the most common reasons we go to the doctor's office so think about all the unnecessary antibiotic prescriptions that are being given out and the unnecessary antibiotics that we're taking. This is pretty significant when we know that as many as 25% of people that get given an antibiotic end up with diarrhea. One in a thousand people end up in the hospital for an adverse antibiotic reaction. And antibiotic resistance is a global health problem right now. We know that so many of the infections that we actually have can't even be treated with the antibiotics that exist anymore because the bugs are resistant to them. So people can end up with fatal infections that can't be treated just because of antibiotic overuse. So taking responsibility for figuring out whether you or your child actually has a sore throat that needs an antibiotic is really important. And in spite of the CDC and other national health organizations continuing to try to educate doctors about reducing their overprescription of antibiotics, in the last 20 years of this, these education campaigns, antibiotic prescribing has only gone down about 10%. So we have to be the ones to ask our doctors questions about whether these are really needed and remind our doctors that no, we're not just there for a prescription. Sometimes we're just there to be told whether something is serious or whether we can treat it on our own. So how do you know whether you do have strep throat and why are we so concerned about treating strep throat with antibiotics? Well, strep throat has the very rare complication of rheumatic disease or rheumatic fever and this has been associated with a further downstream complication that affects the heart valves. But remember, as I told you, only 10% of all sore throats are strep throat. And of those cases of strep throat, it's extremely rare for someone to develop rheumatic fever or rheumatic heart disease. So for most cases, even of strep throat, we don't actually have to treat with antibiotics. In fact, according to the CDC, with or without an antibiotic, most cases of strep throat will clear up on their own in three or four days. Now the problem is that without treating an, uh, with an antibiotic, we can't send our, back, our kids back to school until the infection is completely cleared up, and that often takes three to five days. Um, with an antibiotic, we can send our kids back to school if they've been on the antibiotic for 24 hours. And antibiotics definitely have their place. They can reduce the transmission of strep infection to other people. So if you have somebody at home who's pregnant or if you have a young baby and someone in the house gets strep throat, then an antibiotic can be appropriate. Similarly, if you have somebody who has an immune compromised disease in the house, then giving an antibiotic can be appropriate. And of course, anytime there's strep, it's a reasonable choice if there's really strep infection and not just another viral infection. So how do you know whether you should get tested for strep and whether you have strep throat? Well, a lot of times when you walk into the doctor's office you with a sore throat, you or your child is automatically going to get a throat swab for, for a rapid strep test. But this is actually considered medically inappropriate. What should happen is that your doctor should use something called the Centaur criteria. This is uh, named after Dr. Robert Centaur, C-E-N-T-O-R, and it consists of four criteria. One is the history of fever with this current illness. Two, tonsillar exudates. That means there's white patchy stuff or pus on the back of the throat. Three, there should be no cough accompanying the sore throat. If there's a cough, it's probably a cold or other viral infection. And four, there should be tender swollen lymph nodes in the front of the, of the neck, right in here, kind of where I'm showing you. This centaur criteria can be modified according to the 
person's age who's coming in to be tested. If you're under age 15, you add one point. If you're over age 44, you take away one point. So for each of those criteria I mentioned, you get one point. And the point of this whole system is that it dictates whether you should get tested for strep or your child should get tested for strep and whether an antibiotic should be given. So it goes like this. If you have zero to one points, no antibiotic should be given and no throat culture should be done because the risk of strep infection is under 10%. If you have two to three points, you should get a throat culture and treat with an antibiotic if the culture is positive and you're deciding to use the antibiotic. If you have two points, the risk of strep infection is about 15% and if you have three points, it's about 33%. If you have four or five points, you should treat empirically with an antibiotic if you're going to use an antibiotic. Treating empirically means that if you have that many points, you have over 50% chance of having strep infection and treating with an antibiotic it could be considered appropriate. However, according to the Infectious Disease Society of America, they say it's better to actually wait for the throat culture to come back. Now, a throat culture is not just the rapid strep done in the office. The rapid strep is done and then a throat culture is sent off to a laboratory. What the Infectious Disease Society of America re recommends is that the doctor can write you a prescription for the antibiotic that you can take home, but not fill it unless the throat culture comes back positive. If the throat culture comes back positive, then you can make a decision according to your risk factors or your child's risk factors, who's living at home and what the situation is about whether an antibiotic is appropriate or not. Home remedies can be fantastic for help reducing the discomfort associated with a sore throat. Here's what I do in my practice for myself and for my family for treating garden variety sore throats. Treating strep without antibiotics is a little bit more involved and I don't really discuss that here, but the comfort measures that I do discuss can be used along with strep throat treatment as well. The first thing is to simplify your diet and remove all dairy and sugar because these reduce your immune function and contribute to inflammation and more mucus production. I include fruit juices in the category of taking sugar out of the diet. So no sodas, no fruit juices, no dairy, no sugar. Gargling with warm salt water can help reduce swelling and relieve discomfort. To make warm salt water, simply take one glass of warm water and add about a half a teaspoon of salt and just stir that around and have your, your child or family member or yourself uh, just gargle with that mixture, a, a, a few swallows of it or a few gargle, uh, mouthfuls of it every hour. And you can even teach a toddler to gargle and they'll find it really fun. It's also important to stay hydrated. Warm beverages such as tea and broth can help decrease throat irritation and you need a lot of hydration to fight infections. If you or your child is having trouble swallowing because of throat pain, drinking through a straw, just sipping through a straw can actually alleviate that discomfort and help you to stay hydrated. Using a vaporizer either or humidifier, either with warm or cool water, can help moisturize the air and ease the inflammation in your breathing passages. I found a few herbal remedies to be particularly helpful. Throat sprays, herbal throat spa sprays, can soothe the irritation in the back of the throat and help fight viral and bacterial infections, including strep. One throat spray that I like is by Herb Farm, and it's called Soothing Throat Spray. Herb Farm is spelled H-E-R-B. P-H-A-R-M, and they're easily found in most natural food stores. And this includes echinacea, propolis, hyssop, which is a wonderful herb that's easy to grow and commonly available, sage leaf, and St. John's wort, which is not just for depression. It's actually a great antiviral herb. The only thing with this herb um, remedy is that it's not appropriate for use during pregnancy because of the sage. Another great product is called Throat Shield Lozenges by Gaia Herbs, also commonly available in health food stores and also not indicated in pregnancy. And these can be uh, sucked on throughout the day as long as you know, your child is old enough uh, to not have a choking risk and certainly used by adults. I also add zinc to my plan when I'm um, having somebody treat a sore throat at home. For children under five, I don't recommend it without talking with your physician first. For children ages five to 10, five to 10 milligrams in a zinc lozenge, which can be easily sucked, um, can be a pro is a appropriate dose. And for everyone over 10, anywhere between 10 and 25 milligrams once or twice a day is appropriate. 
It's important to know when to see your doctor. So these are the red flags when you know that something might be going on more than a simple viral sore throat or when a strep infection has, has gone too far. Um, any sore throat lasting more than a week. If your child looks really sick, in medical terms we call it toxic. They're just laying around and they just don't look right to you. If you or a family member has shaking chills, a high fever over 102 or 39 degrees Celsius. If there are night sweats, if there's neck pain or swelling only on one side, if someone is talking funny or unable to swallow even their saliva so they're drooling, these are important red flags and indicate that you have to get medical care. Also, if a teenager has a sore throat that come and goes, comes and goes, but then comes back with a vengeance or just won't go away, this can be an indication of a peritonsal or abscess or something called Lemierre's disease, which also requires prompt medical attention. Again, there's no harm, no foul if there is strep and you choose to use an antibiotic. That's completely appropriate. But keep in mind that you want to also use a probiotic along with the antibiotic for the entire duration and I usually recommend for a couple of weeks after so that you can restore that gut flora and prevent diarrhea and problems that can accompany antibiotic use. I hope your season is healthy without any sore throats or strep, but if you do run into problems, I hope these tips help you. If you have comments or questions, please post them in the comments section below. And if you have found this helpful, I hope you'll share it with your friends, family members, or patients. I look forward to hearing from you and love sharing this information with you.